We all have obsessions in life, don't we? I have two, salt and the planet. Salt is the spice of life. Our bodies need it for basic functioning. And so do the many creatures that live on our blue planet, 70% of which is salty water. Now you need to be a little bit obsessed to do a PhD. And so here I am, perhaps unsurprisingly, doing mine on seagrasses, plants that can live in seawater. And let me tell you, they're incredible. They breathe oxygen into our oceans. They provide food and shelter for many creatures like fish, supporting the health and happiness of millions, including us, whether it's snorkeling in Rottnest or fishing on this, this one river. What's scary though, is seagrasses do all of this despite occupying only 1% of the entire sea floor. And scarier than that, seagrasses are disappearing. There are many killers, but the one that I'm looking at is salt. To survive, grow, and reproduce, like us, seagrasses need just the right amount of salt. But what is this amount? How much salt do you need? How much do I need? It's a complicated question. And most likely, what you or I need are different. Seagrasses live in areas where the salt supply is constant and in areas where the supply varies. But we don't know this. And this is where my research comes in. My aim is to identify if seagrass populations are different so that we can figure out if the way we manage them is doing more harm or good. Because currently we use a one size fits all approach. This information is necessary for those conserving our coast because it tells them where and how to allocate their money, such as figuring out if the strong seagrasses can be used to buffer the weak. So this journey is about learning how to conserve our underwater forests. But it's so much more than that. I hope to ingrain their importance into your belief system. I wouldn't be worth my salt otherwise. Thank you.